Hi guys and welcome to my brand new vlog. Today I'm going to go through the behind the scenes working out how I actually created my Anzac Day photos. When we're in isolation, sometimes we have to look no further than our backyard to get a little bit of inspiration. And it felt wrong not to be doing something for it so this was my way of creating something that maybe can be shared and enjoyed. I guess let's get into it. This is my setup. When in ISO, just do what you can. So these statues, they actually belonged to my husband and it was incredibly lucky to have them in the house and to be able to use them for something like this. Without them, it's just a Milky Way shot. But with them, they give something more to the photo. And I think that's really important. So the piece on the left is a injured soldier who's being helped by a fuzzy wazzy angel on the Kokoda Trail. This one's really, really special because his grandfather was on the Kokoda Trail itself. And the other one is just absolutely gorgeous. Like the horse is fantastic. And this one is from the Light Horse Brigade. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me on it. So the goal tonight is to try and capture these two statues to the best of my ability, working out composition, uh, the alignment of the Milky Way, and overall, what's gonna be the strongest images. Now, I've checked out an app called PhotoPills, which is fantastic for astrophotography, and based on my location, it's telling me that I should come back out here around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, because that's when the Milky Way core is gonna be above the horizon and in the perfect position for me to take these photos. So in terms of the setup, I'll actually be using a Canon 5D Mark III, and I'll be using a very technical setup two Technice Eskies with a wooden board underneath and we just had some of this rubber matting. I really have to kind of get low to try and get these statues to stand out above the Milky Way and not get the house from next door in the shot. These guys are already starting to kind of look pretty cool so just imagine a Milky Way behind that. So I've been primarily using ISO 4000 f2.8 for about 20 seconds. I don't want to go any longer because I don't really want to get the trails of the stars. I want them to be nice and sharp. Now I could go further using the rule of 500, but I just kind of find that 20 to 25 seconds is just a sweet spot for my camera and it just works for what I want. Okay, so I just took this shot. So it looks like as if like the top of the tree actually looks like a bush in the camera and as if they're coming over a hill and the Milky Way is just to the other side of them. So I've worked out a bit of a process. Um, work out the composition first where you want to focus on the Milky Way and have the statue in the shot. And then once you're happy with the composition, focus on the statue first. And then once you've got that, remove the statue and then focus on the Milky Way. And that way, when you bring the two images together into Photoshop, it should theoretically mask together really, really cleanly. And you should have a really good, strong, clean edit. Well, he's hoping anyway. <laughs> Hello, puss. I'm using the same settings, which is pretty much my go-to settings for Astro nowadays. F2.8, and that lets in a lot of light for Astro. And being able to kind of balance that with ISO 4000, which for some people that might be a bit high, for some people less, um, you can really go whatever you want for your camera. And that's what this whole Astro thing is, at least for me and what I've learned over the past couple of years, is that you just got to work out what your camera is good at. Got some detail on the Milky Way, but missing the bottom of the horse, so try again. So it's been a couple of hours and I think I've got a couple of really good shots and I can't wait to go inside, check it out on the iMac and see what I can come up with. Oh, absolutely amazing. <laughs> 